How are you guys? Can you guys hear me? If you can, just um, say yes in the chat. Thank you guys for joining. Yes, I can hear you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. I, I looked away, so I didn't even see who said that, but thank you. Um, cool. So as you guys know, Facebook and Instagram are down. So we're all trying to figure out our lives. And um, I still wanted to connect. I actually have planned on going live today on Instagram because I haven't been live in a, in a well, I went live on one, last Wednesday or so, but um, I haven't done like a Airbnb Q&A in a minute. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do that today. And then I got on Instagram and I was like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> just kidding, right? So um, I definitely want to do that today. Yeah, we just started, um, if someone was asking, um, cool. So yeah, we just, just started. I can actually see you guys in the chat box really well. If you can just mute yourself so we don't have too much feedback or anything, I think it sounds pretty good. Um, but what I wanted to do today, first of all, if you don't know me, you probably do because you probably got my text, but my name is Nana Alison Yarko. I teach all things Airbnb, how to start a short-term rental with or without buying property. I've hosted over 20 units since 2014. Um, was able to book over $250,000 in one year. And now what I really love doing is teaching other people how to make passive income with Airbnb, like I said, with or without buying property. But I also um, really want to start teaching people or I've started teaching people how to create passive income with courses and digital products like eBooks. And the reason why I love doing that is because um, it's a really, I don't want to say easy, but it's a really um, inexpensive way to start making passive income. And I realized that passive income is like my new favorite subject. <laughs> it's my new favorite way of life because it's really helpful on days when, you know, you just have other things that you need to attend to. You might have a nine to five job. Some of you guys may or may not know that I'm also an attorney. I don't currently practice, but there have been times where I'm practicing and I'm still making money with my Airbnb, right? Or I'm still making money with my courses. And I haven't shared this yet, but um, last month was my highest month in terms of gross income from my course sales. And that was over $20,000. And I just looked at it and I was like, oh, wait, how did, when did that happen? And so I really wanna be able to share that with people. So today is really a Q&A. Um, for those of you who are on with me, go ahead and let me know where you're from, um, where you are watching this right now, and then we can start to just, um, yeah, just introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, let me know what questions you have. Let me do this. Actually, introduce yourself in the chat and where you're from and where you might be. Are you more interested in Airbnb or digital passive income from courses and eBooks, or are you interested in both? That'll help me kind of um, guide what we're going to talk about today, okay? Torlanda, I hope I said that right, says both. Cool. Um, if I minimize this, you guys, oh, you cannot minimize. Okay, never mind. It's been a minute since I did a Zoom. Um, okay, so both, both, both. All right, so which would you guys prefer? Oh, no. Which would you guys prefer to talk about first? Um Ooh, Rancho Cucamonga. I just love saying that. <laughs> it's such a fun city to say the name of, Rancho Cucamonga. Um, that's so cool. All right, I see Brooklyn, New York, awesome. Chattanooga, Tennessee, sweet. Texas, New Orleans, nice. Um, Florida, Buffalo, New York. Well, let me say you guys' name. I see Jasmine, Sarah, India um, from Atlanta, Cynthia, Lance. Martin, just make sure you mute yourself. Um, I can hear somebody's feedback. I guess I could try to find you, but um, it's quite, it's a couple people on here. So if you can mute yourself, that would be great. Uh, okay, Dina, India, Sarah, Shan, Felicia, New Jersey, Tawana, from Nor uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, another, uh, oh, okay. Amisha from Charlotte, okay. Jen from Dayton, Ohio, um, by way of DMV. All right, yes, to DC, Maryland, Virginia. Dallas, Texas, 
Um, Kia, thank you. Also DC, um, Diamonds from DC and Tia is from Jacksonville. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. So, um, who is that? <laughs> uh, I gotta find, how do I mute all? Okay. Hold on guys, I'm still figuring out, like I know how to do is uh, Instagram live, but haven't quite figured out the Zooms. Let me see. Um, it's gotta be a way. I just want to mute everyone and I don't see how to do that. If you are like good with Zoom, please feel free to let me know how to do this in the chat. I, I'm totally transparent. I don't fully know. Yeah, I, I can't find her. Do you guys know who it might be? Also- it's Brisha. <laughs> oh, okay. And then if you go to the more button and you go to the chat, it should show up um, everybody's. You go into participants and it should show up like whose microphone is on. And so hers is is gray. And then that's where you'll mute, mute it. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm gonna mute. So say Bruce, Larry. She's like right under your name. And then you just mute it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna mute everyone, although you're being very helpful. Thank you, uh, Kia. Um, so I'm gonna try that for now. Okay, then you can unmute yourself. Okay, cool. So all right, so I've muted everyone. Um, and if you've got good information, feel free, or when we get to that point, um, feel free to unmute yourself for questions. Okay, so um, let's start with, can I first go over starting an Airbnb without making a property purchase? Yes. So that is like my main bread and butter. That is exactly how I um, started. So I initially started in the apartment that I lived in um, and I would just use it for Airbnb whenever I would travel. Um, So I traveled at the time, I traveled a lot for work and I traveled for fun. So I would just literally for that particular weekend, I would Airbnb my place. This is back in 2014 though. So this is a while ago. And um, I didn't really think about it. I kind of asked my property manager if it was cool. And they were like, yeah. So I'm always a big proponent of um, asking for permission. Now, again, this is 2014. So it was uh, probably a little easier. I was in one of those like large apartment complexes. Um, And that's how I started. And then I was laid off. So then I would do a room in my apartment um, full time, like just whenever I was unless I was over guests for for whatever, or I just wanted some me time, I would um, Airbnb the room in the apartment. And that was very lucrative. And so um, fast forward, I know a lot of you may or may not be able to do that. So the way that I recommend people get started, excuse me, is with um, is with rental arbitrage or master leasing, which is when you go out and you rent a property specifically for Airbnb and you get permission from the landlord to do this. So you make sure, one thing I I really wanna stress, especially nowadays, is that you need to have it in your lease that you're allowed to to use it as a short-term rental, basically that you're allowed to sublet. Um, And so your original lease might say you can't sublet this property. So you either need to negotiate that with the property management team, um, the landlord, whoever, or have an addendum added. And that's something I include in my course, um, how to actually put that into your lease so that it's in writing. And the reason why this is so important right now is because so many people, either they got, either they flew under the radar, got an apartment, you know, never told the owners or the property management that they were going to Airbnb. And now months down the line, like they're getting reported on by the neighbors. And so the landlord is like, you either have to evict or stop doing Airbnb completely. So there's that, you know, where they totally like didn't even ask permission. But then there's the other case where people got permission from like this one person at the apartment complex, right? You got permission from this one particular property manager and then that property manager leaves. They get transferred to another place or they get fired or they just quit, whatever the case may be. And then the rest of the apartment complex or the 
rest of the staff is like, no, this is not allowed. Or the new management company is like, no, this is not allowed. So when it's in your lease, it is so much better for you. And then I'm also a huge fan of, um, you know, private private owners, private landlords, like mom and pop landlords who own like one particular building, they own, you know, one single family or a townhouse or whatever the case may be. Or maybe they own like if you're from the DMV area, right, you know, we have um, a lot of places have this, but you'll have like a four unit. And it'll be I have a girlfriend like my third Airbnb, I think that I did was with a girlfriend of mine who owned a four unit building, she lived in one, and she rented all of the other three. And, you know, she had a full time job, she just happened to buy this property like years ago, um, for a good price. And she self-managed. So she doesn't have a property manager. She, she still has a full-time job. And she was having trouble renting one of her units. So I just ran that by her. I said, hey, I'm doing this Airbnb thing. Um, and the thing is, private owners are so much more flexible than these big corporations, right? So that's why I'm a big fan of private owners. I also like, you know, those single families, um, I, I just think that it's an easier way of getting started. So I teach the strategy of how to do that, how to talk to loan owners, how to talk to landlords, um, what to say to them, at, whether you're going for the bigger apartment complexes, you know, luxury buildings are big, or you're going for that mom and pop, you need to know what to say to get in order to get them to work with you. The biggest thing though, is you have to have it in writing because like I'm not in the Atlanta area. I've actually never hosted in Atlanta because I've never really lived there. Um, but I have a, quite a few students who are or are just fellow Airbnb hosts. And one of my fellow hosts posted the other day that like there's a complex in Atlanta where they know short term rentals are happening that they didn't allow. And so they've got like signs on the door um, going into the complex that are like, hey, we know you might be staying here in an Airbnb. It's not allowed. If you let us know, we'll give you a hundred dollar Visa gift card and help you find another. Yes. So you want to make sure you've got all of that in writing and you just cover yourself. So I am, see, I'm not great. I am great at this. Let me speak good things into existence. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is um, for those of you who might be interested in my course, um, I want to share the link with you guys. So give me one second. And I know I see that um, there are a couple of other questions. I'm going to get to those as well. So give me two seconds. Um, but yeah, like that is a big thing. And that I just recently saw about, um, you know, Atlanta, but a lot of places I actually just sent in my um, weekly newsletter. And if you're not on my weekly newsletter, just, uh, I guess, text me um, because I send like news about Airbnb in general every week. Um, and one of the articles I sent was another similar kind of story about um, an apartment complex in Charlotte where they actually had been allowed. Um, but again, it was the same sort of situation where they got permission from like one particular manager and it wasn't in their lease. They had it in their email. So they do have some like you know, back up, but it's not in their lease. So that's something that's really important. Okay, let me focus. All right. Okay, so if you're interested in the course, that is the link for the course. I'll try to, um, I'll try to post it a couple times. And I'm also going to share the link to my ebook. Um, and people often ask me, what's the difference between the ebook bundle and the course? Well, the course is a lot more detailed. So the course is like, it's more like this, where I'm literally walking you through everything. Everything I just talked about, I'm showing you like my actual documents and I'm walking you through how to do that. I'm showing you like how to call landlords and what to say. I'm walking you through like how to create your listing and things like that. So it's just a lot more in depth. So the first link I shared is the Airbnb course. And the second link is the ebook. Um, the ebook is, you know, a lot of good information. You can really get started with it, but um, I mean, it's a good option as well. So the ebook is a bundle 
it's my travel nurse hosting ebook as well as my Airbnb um, course. I do have a travel nurse course as well. I'll share that later. I don't want to overwhelm everyone. So let me go back to the questions. <sighs> okay. Will a replay be sent? Um, yes, I think I will email it. What about with apartments? I kind of talked about that. What if we want to lease a different property? How would that come about with the property purchase? Getting money to the property. I'm not sure I understand this question, Jasmine. What if we want to lease a different property? How would that come about with property purchase and getting the money to purchase a property? So can you clarify this question a little bit? I'm not really, I'm not understanding it, but it just might be the way I'm reading it. What's the best strategy to attract professionals to rent your Airbnb? That's a good question. Um, so I think it comes down to your location. So if you know that you want professionals, um, you, maybe wanna, you maybe want to be located in a business district, even with remote work, some people like to be near um, the office because some people um, have to go in like once or twice a week at this point um, or they just want to that access if they need something from the office so that's a good way to attract professionals um, also making sure that a question okay give me one second um, making sure that you um, actually if you can drop your questions in the chat I'll open it up in a little bit but let me get through some of the content so drop it in the chat that way people who've already asked questions um, I can get to those first just to keep it fair. Um, so what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, making sure that you highlight that your property is set up for professionals. So like you wanna have things like, you know, highlighting that you've got a desk, maybe you have a printer, maybe you have um, just things that professionals in the business space would want and need. Um, if you're trying to attract creators, that's something I literally just thought of. Um, maybe you have a ring light, you might wanna like, you know, uh, make sure it's like, what's the word I'm looking for? Sealed to the floor so it doesn't get taken. But I mean, just those kind of things. You want to think outside the box. You want to think of what would you as a professional want in your space? And then you want to make sure in your listing and maybe even in your title, you're highlighting those things so that someone who's looking there, it's going to pop up for them. And they're really going to say, see it, see it and be like, oh, this person has a printer. They have X, Y, Z this is where I want to stay and they're near the office. So those are, those are really good ways to do that. Okay. That's going by viral at that property. Yeah. I, I've seen it on a couple different things. So it's kind of funny um, about the, the property that is offering gift cards. All right. Do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching and how much if so? So I no longer do one-on-one -on -one coaching just because of time. So what I do is in my, if you're in my Airbnb course, I go live on Tuesdays, um, every other Tuesday for private Q&A. So private Q&A is, it's like this, it's like a Zoom like this, um, but with my students and you can ask me like specific questions. So here we're kind of doing general questions, but like if you have started contacting landlords and you're like, hey, no, no, this is what's going on. I don't, what should I do next? I can ask, answer those specific questions for you. And to be honest, because people have different schedules, like some of the um, private Q and A's, it's been like 10 people, 15 people, but some of them, you know, it'll be like two people. So that ends up being kind of private coaching. So that's how I do my private coaching. It's through um, my Airbnb course. Okay, what about funding? Yes, so funding, so if you're um, master leasing, right, if you're doing um, rental arbitrage, yes, you do need to have funds, right? You have to have enough money to actually do your application. Most places are not free. You have to have enough money for um, the rent, the first month's rent, any sort of deposit that they require, and then you need to furnish it. So in the course, I teach you, I have a whole section on funding, like how to actually um, get funding specifically for Airbnb. Um, there are some companies that do Airbnb funding specifically, but then even like you can think outside the box, like if you have access to a zero interest um, credit card, right? Uh, if you've got 
a zero interest credit card. I've done one of my Airbnbs that way where I just, you know, made sure that every time I got paid from Airbnb, I was paying that off so that, you know, I didn't end up with 22% interest or something crazy. But there are some really good quality cards out there. Now, if that's not an option for you, I have like a full list of um, places that you can go for funding specifically for Airbnb. Now, another thing I want to talk about, though, is um, especially for those of you who either maybe you don't want to go the credit route, you don't want to do business credit, you don't want to do any of that, or maybe, um, you know, you just don't have the access to the funds. Another way to get started is with co-hosting. So someone asked earlier, you know, how do you start without purchasing property? Co-hosting is a great way to do this. And co-hosting is when you go out and you find an owner and you host the property for them. So when I say to you guys that I hosted over 20 Airbnb units, maybe four or five of them were um, rentals and the rest were co-hosts. And that like took my business to a whole nother level because I was able to scale so much more quickly, right? I didn't want to have to put down so much money. I mean, even though renting is a bajillion times cheaper or less expensive than going out and buying a property specifically for Airbnb, it's still quite a bit of capital that you have to put out there, right? Um, even with the tips and things that I teach you, um, you know, how to furnish for less money and how to furnish possibly even for free, depending on your location and all that good stuff. Um, but with co-hosting, you pretty much have no expenses, right? Because it's the owner's property. So they're the ones who have to furnish it. Um, they're the ones who have to pay the mortgage and all that stuff. And you get paid because you get paid um, a, a fee that you and the owner agree on per booking. So let's say you and that owner agree on 20% as your fee. So every booking that comes in, you are going to make 20% of that. Right. I show you how to set all that up in the in the back end of Airbnb. So like I like to get paid directly. I don't want someone else paying me. Um, so I show you how to set it up in Airbnb so that it pays you kind of automatically based on the percentage that you and the owner decide on. But you see, that is a great way to get started because you don't have rent. You don't have furniture expenses. I like um, interior design. So for a lot of my co-hosting. Um, partners, I would actually design it for them. And that's a whole separate fee, right? I would help them pick the furniture, set it all up, and I would charge a fee for that. If that's not your thing, don't worry about it. But um, co-hosting allows you to get started, you know, and I show you same thing, like how to go out and find people. Like I call it the village search, because you'd be so surprised how many people you might know who own property that either they're not doing anything with or they're interested in the idea of Airbnb, but they don't want to be the ones to actually run it. They just want to sit back and have the money come to them. So you step in and you say, hey, I've learned this. I understand how to do it. Um, I can run this Airbnb for you. This is what I'm thinking of as a fee. And you guys go from there. Of course, same thing. You want to have it all in writing, right? You want to make sure that like when... If anything were to happen, you know that you guys agreed on 15%, 20%, whatever the case may be. So that's a really good way to get started because you pretty much have zero expenses unless, um, you know, I teach you how to automate a lot of things. There's a lot of great software out there to automate like the messages and things like that and automate, you know, your um, check-in and check-out instructions. So those softwares, um, they're usually either free up to a certain number of listings, or it'll be like either a very small like monthly fee, or some of them might charge you an additional percentage of the bookings. But aside from that, and you can choose, like I give you options of which, which ones are which. So, you know, based on your income and how much you want to spend, you can choose to do that. Or you can choose to just use Airbnb and only um, and do, you know, use the templates and tools and things like that that I show you um, until you get to a point where you want to incorporate additional things. So co-hosting is great. And like I said, co-hosting got me access to properties that would have taken me a lot longer if I had tried to do them on my own. What I mean by that is I hosted um, two super nice luxury five and six bedroom houses Right. One, both, actually, both of them had rooftop decks, full views of the city, 
like really, really nice. I personally was not in a position to either buy. I mean, both of them were over a million dollars. <laughs> you know, I was not in a position to buy those properties. I was not in a position to even rent those properties. And I was not in a position to fully furnish those properties. It's a lot of furniture. So it helped me to be able to do that. Um, so I love, I really love co-hosting. I really think it's a great way for people to get started and not enough, in my opinion, not enough people talk about it. Everyone's all about rental arbitrage. Um, and I get it because there are pros and cons with co-hosting. You have to remember you are still working with slash for someone else because it is their property, right? Um, with master leasing, you're working basically for yourself. The only thing is you've got this landlord, but you just pay them their money every month and you know usually they're not going to bother you so um that's just something to keep in mind can you please text me the link i will text um if you're on my uh text list i will text the link to the course after this that's a good question thank you dina diana diana um I want to cater to travel and medical Airbnb VRBO. Um, I'm not clear on how to advertise on that multiple platforms, how that works. Will they overlap or book on top of each other? Please explain. Cool. That's a really good question. So let me actually drink this water instead of just holding it. A topic. Okay. I love travel nurses. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, hopefully it'll be back up. I don't know, but um, I love travel nurses. I love hosting travel nurses. Honestly, for me, when the pandemic hit last year, like in the really beginning of the pandemic, that saved my business because I had a lot of international travelers um, before that, or just like people traveling to um, most of my Airbnbs were in the DMV area, DC, Maryland, Virginia. So I had a lot of business travelers. I had a lot of um, students because that area is full of colleges and universities, all those shut down. I had a lot of um, government travelers, interns. It was popping. It was great. I had a lot of international travelers, but all that shut down. So, and I had all these units, like my units as well as co-hosted units. So we, we pivoted really hard to, I had hosted travel nurses or travel medical professionals before, so that was great because I had the experience, but we did a lot last year. Um, so one thing I do have a course specifically on that, but um, your question to your question about putting things on multiple platforms, this is why it's so important that you link all of your listings. What do I mean by that? So if you're on Airbnb and VRBO, you need to make sure those calendars are talking to each other. So this is what goes back to the software and tech tool stack that I that I include for you guys in the course, because that is the worst. It's one of the worst things that can happen when you're in this business is getting double bookings and double bookings is when those calendars were not talking to each other. So you got a booking on Airbnb for the first through the eighth and you got a booking on VRBO from the fifth through the ninth those are overlapping. You only have one property, right? So that's, that's not good. Both Airbnb and VRBO will be very upset with you. <laughs> um, you know, if you have multiple units, you have some wiggle room. If you've got a vacant property, you kind of can move people around if that ever were to happen, but it's not something you want to do. So basically you want to make sure your, your calendars are linked and synced um, there are, you can do it in the back end of VRBO and Airbnb, but there are some software tools that do it even better. And the reason why I say this is because Airbnb and VRBO and a lot of these platforms, they will sync like once a day, right? Um, but if you have a very active listing, people could be, um, and I always, I always uh, promote doing instant book, right? Instant book is when someone can eat, just, look at your listing and be like, oh, these dates are open, great. They meet all of your verif verification requirements. So you put in your listing, like what, what you require. If they meet those requirements, they can instantly book without having to talk. Oh, great. Without having to talk 
back and forth with you, right? If you don't have instant book on, you actually have to physically approve this person who's requesting to book you. A lot of people don't like that. Um, so, but if you have instant book on, that means like they, you might not catch or the syncing that happens once a day, like let's say it happens at 11 a.m. and someone instant books you on Airbnb at 4 p.m. and if, on VRBO at 5 p.m., they didn't sync. So you end up getting that double booking. So there's other software out there that does it a little bit better. You don't have to use it because unless you're like, your listing is on and popping, um, that probably won't happen, but it's just something to think about once you get to the point where you're really getting a lot of bookings. Um, so that's really how you do it. You really wanna make sure your softwares are talking to each other. And then if you, um, I teach you how to get direct bookings as well especially with travel nurses, um, because some of them book on Airbnb and VRBO, but some of them book outside of that. So if you're doing direct bookings, you want to make sure that um, when you get a direct booking, either you or someone on your team is making sure to block those dates. So it's all about being on top of your calendar. You cannot let that slip. Um, it'll, it'll just mess you up and have cause more commotion than you need. So um, let me actually share that as well for anybody interested. Guys, I need an assistant, um, but they have to be like real cool. So if you know somebody, so that's the travel nurse um, link and I'll, I'll send everything by um, text as well. Okay, let me go back to the questions. Okay. What are my favorite sites besides Airbnb um, to post my listings? So VRBO for sure. I really like VRBO for groups, um, especially if you've got like a, a bigger unit. I like that for groups. Um, even now people are still traveling internationally. So I like it for international travelers. Um, families like to use VRBO and VRBO is, is older than Airbnb because VRBO, which stands for Vacation Rental by Owner, was bought by uh, or merged with HomeAway. HomeAway has been around for years, so a lot of older travelers are more familiar with it. Um, so they're used to booking on there and they still book on there, right? Um, Airbnb is only 10 years old or so. Um, so I, I like VRBO a lot. And then booking.com, a lot of people don't realize that you can list your own property on booking.com as well. The only thing with booking.com, it's not as, in my opinion, user-friendly, um, but I've gotten good bookings on there. Like you just have to learn, you know, each system. So I always, I always recommend starting with Airbnb because one of the reasons why they're so popular is um, that they are a lot more user-friendly than some of these other platforms. But VRBO is a good one. Booking.com is a good one. You can even do Expedia or TripAdvisor. I just say like learn and know fully one system before you add another, because every time you add another, that's just a little bit more um, um, organization that you have to be on top of, like we just talked about with syncing your calendars and things like that. But it's, it's great to do. It's great to be on multiple platforms so that you can get just more people looking at your at your listing at a time. What is the process? What is the process of co-hosting? Okay, so we kind of talked about that, I think. Um, if you already have an Airbnb, what are the best strategies to get more bookings? I say get my course, <laughs> but honestly, no. Um, no, not no, but yeah, <laughs> get my course. But also, um, I would say, one, I probably have to look at your listing, um, but I would take a look at your competition. Take a look at the top ranked um, listings in your particular area and see what they're doing. Like, how are your photos? Are your photos in good quality? Is it good lighting? Um, what does your title say? Is your title super generic or does it really speak to someone saying, hey, um, excellent three bedroom, gorgeous property, you know, something that's really going to catch somebody's eye. Um, five minutes to the downtown metro or whatever the case may be, like you want to highlight, you don't want to just be, 
you know, generic Jenny um, on Airbnb. You want to highlight your features because you got to remember, it's just like social media. There are so many competitors out there. Um, you want your listing to stand out. I'd say the biggest thing a lot of times is pictures. Your listing, your listing description, like it shouldn't be so short that it doesn't really give somebody information. You want to provide enough information so someone can really make an informed decision on whether or not they, they want to stay there. And um, what else would I say? Also, don't let your listing be stale. So sometimes people will list their property on Airbnb one time and never touch it again. You can't do that. Like you, it's just like, it's just like anything else on the internet. You have to kind of every now and then um, update it. So Airbnb knows that you're an active host. Um, and then another thing I would say is how quickly are you responding to uh, messages? That's a big thing too. Like if, if Airbnb sees that you're not an active host and you're not taking it seriously, you're taking like days at a time to respond to guests, um, they're not going to rank you as high because they, you're, you're, you're not really hosting the way they, they want you to. So that's, those are some things to think about. As a new business, let's say we have our paid X score. We want to see three to six times the rent. What is a way to go about this when getting the first unit? I hear people to say put money in the business bank account, but even if I had six times the rent, there would be, would that be enough or is it, or is it activity on the account of money coming in that they want to see? <sighs> that is a more complicated question. Um, I can't really answer this because it's going to depend on the apartment complex. So what he's asking about is like, you know, they want to, some of these apartment complexes want to see six times the amount of rent um, that you have as income or available to you in your bank balance. Um, I don't know what they like on their end. Every apartment complex is going to run it differently. So if you have the ability to put that much in your account, I think that's not a bad idea. Um, if you have the ability to improve your business credit, I think that's not a bad idea. Um, so yeah, that's the best way I think I can answer that. Do you need a license in DC or Maryland to Airbnb? Um, so in Maryland, it's gonna depend on the county, like Prince George's County, do you need a license? Um, and I just haven't noticed because I've hosted in those cities, like off the top of my head, I mean. Um, certain counties, they have really strict restrictions. So you might have to do like more so cater to travel nurses for more than 30 days. DC, DC last I checked, um, is a toss up. They say they require one, um, but there's like no enforcement and no way of getting one. <laughs> so um, I always recommend, this is not legal advice, this is not business advice, um, but I always recommend getting a property um, leasing license, like a rental license um, and a business license because the short-term rental license, when I last checked, there was like no actual way of getting it. So you just want to protect yourself as much as possible. Um, and again, this is not legal advice. Okay, can you rent out one of your rooms? Absolutely, that is that is how I started. Um, you may not have been here in the beginning, but that is how I started with Airbnb. I rented a room in my apartment. Well, first I rented the whole apartment when I was out of town, because I just, I don't know, I didn't care. I just wanted the money. Um, and then I rented a room in my apartment um, whenever I was up to it, uh, really, because I was laid off. I wanted to cover my expenses. So absolutely, I know people who, um, I have a friend in, in uh, the DC metro area and she rents out her basement every single day, like as, as many times as she can get a booking. Um, and it's just a room in her basement. It's not like a, a, a huge basement or anything like that. So absolutely. What license do you need for Airbnb in Florida? Off the top of my head, I don't know because I've never hosted in Florida. But in the course, I do show you how to find your local rules and regulations. And I, I say that I really mean local because the state of Florida is not is it's not going to be the state of Florida that has the regulations you're looking for. It's going to be your city, um, let's say Tampa, or it's going to be your county even. Right. Like that person, April, asked me about um, about uh, Maryland and DC. And I mentioned Prince George's County because Prince George's County has its own 
rules versus like Montgomery County or whatever. So you actually need to look for your specific areas regulations. So I show you exactly how to do that in the course um, because you don't want to go, let's say you're in Clark County, Nevada, and then there's Henderson, the city of Henderson, Nevada. You don't wanna go based off of Henderson, the city, when Clark County has its own separate regulations. It's kind of crazy. So you really like, because Henderson is technically part of Clark County, but the city of Henderson has decided to allow short-term rentals with a license that you have to pay an annual fee, but the county, Clark County, they're not allowed. So you have to like really narrow down to your specific, specific area. Okay, is there software education in the course? Absolutely, I have a whole section on automation and honing your skills. And that's where I break down like the, my automation tech stack. Um, so it's all the different software tools that I like to use um, to make things a lot more automated. And then I give you options because like there are some that I started with that were less expensive. There are some that are better if you, if you're someone like me who you want, like I don't host 20 units anymore, but if you're someone who wants to get to that scale, you need more robust software than someone who's hosting one, two, three, four properties, right? So I give you all those options in the course as well. Just starting out in the process of signing master lease for six different properties. Yes, holla April. Um, four in DC, two in PG, what would you recommend? Too much at once, market rent prices only. So if you've never hosted before, so I don't know if this is the April that I know personally. Um, and the reason why I say this is because if it's the one that I know personally, I know you have a lot of real estate experience. So it might be all right for you um, just because you have so much real estate experience. Um, if it's if it's not someone with a lot of real estate experience, and I mean like you 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 leased properties before, like you've done rental properties, you flipped houses, you've done all this stuff. Um, even having that background, this is a little different, right? This is a little bit more initially until you get your processes in order, and it's until it's more automated. Initially, it's a little bit more active. So just think about: Can you handle? having never done it before, guest messaging for six properties that could all happen at the same, on the same day, um, you know, cleaning turnovers for six properties that could all happen on the same day. Um, it's not, not doable at all. And I know a lot of people will do this because it's a great way to get landlords to say yes. So it's like pros and cons. You have to decide for yourself. If you are willing to lease more units at once, landlords are they love that, right? If it's a landlord, whether they're a bigger apartment complex or a mom and pop who happen to own like a 10 unit building and six of their units are vacant and you're willing to take them all at once, they're willing, to, they're, they're gonna be like, heck yeah, it's here, take it. Um, so it's a great way to do that. But you just have to think of, like you have to be on it with messaging guests, sending check-in instructions, sending checkout instructions. So that's where automation really becomes key. And that's why I like, so in the, I know I keep referring to the course, I don't want to be super salesy, but the reason I put it together is, is for stuff like this. Like I have full templates for your guest messages. Like, so you could literally go into Airbnb and copy and paste the template. And this is what you send every single time. Of course, you're going to have to change it up a little bit for like, you have a two bedroom and the template says a one bedroom, right? Things like that. But um, you want to have all that set up in place within your first like month of, of something like that, where you have so many units, you want to set that up really quickly, um, just so that you don't get overwhelmed. Um, in the course, I also teach you how to kind of set up your team, because, you know, eventually you want maybe a virtual assistant doing this. And it, again, if it's, if it's the person I know, I know they've worked with VAs before. Um, VAs are virtual assistants. And so that would be very helpful experience as well, because a lot of this eventually, like I teach you how to um, document your specific process for your specific property, right? You want to document, okay, 
I know people are always going to ask me about parking and the parking you have to go make a left on Main Street and then a right up. So you want to document that, put it into your templates so that it could be an automated message that's sent out. And then if it's a question that comes up, you can train your VA how to answer it. Right. So eventually you want to document your process so that you can delegate it to somebody else so that, you know, the goal is, again, passive income. Right. That's the whole point um, of what we're talking about today. So that's that's what you have to consider with something like that. Are market market rent prices OK? So that's a really good question. You want to make data driven decisions. So two sites that I recommend, and I'll tell you guys now, I break it down more in the course. But you want to look at, you know, what can you get on a nightly rate for each one of these properties and make sure the rent makes sense. Like if if the if you can make four thousand dollars a month based on the nightly rate for this one bedroom in whatever area um, and the rent is only fifteen hundred and your utilities are going to be an additional three hundred, then, yeah, it makes sense. But you have to take that into consideration. So just make sure that you run the comps, right? In the real estate world, we say run the comps. Those are the comparable. Usually in real estate, we're talking about comparable sales or comparable rents. You want to run the comparable um, nightly rates in that particular area for that same type of property. So two good sites for this are AirDNA and Mash Visor. So um, you can check those out. You can even check out Airbnb and just look at look at similar properties. But in the course, I break down like how exactly I would run the numbers um, to make sure that it makes sense for you. Um, ooh, we got a lot of messages. I'm going slow because I don't want us to get cut off. I, I never use Zoom, so I, didn't, I, don't, I don't have as like a paid Zoom account. I should have done that, but um, I don't want them to cut us off. Yes, even if you get a rental property in your name, you need you need permission from the landlord. Um, you need permission. Like, just don't don't even try not to get permission because it's just going to cost you in the long run. Like, okay, maybe you get away with it. That would be very great. But so many people are hip to the game now, um, and you would hate to pay for all of this furniture and all this stuff, and then you have to break the lease early and you have to pay like you know, two months rent on top of like, it's just, it's not worth it. Just get permission. Um, if you can't get permission, go somewhere else or co-host. You co-host, it's the owner's property, you know? So, um, all right, some of these have kind of answered. Would you need to take my course um, if you already have started an Airbnb, I think it depends. Like I had started an Airbnb already and I got a mentor, um, because I wanted to better it. I wanted to have more bookings. I wanted to raise my prices. I just wanted to step my game up. I wanted to have more units. Um, so I got a mentor. Um, I think like I teach about courses and I teach about ebooks and I made great money with courses and ebooks, but I still have a course and ebook mentor. So um, I think if you're, if you, I'm a big fan of always improving your skills. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say on that. Um, do I find three and four bedrooms homes easy to rent to groups? Um, yeah, groups and families. And again, this goes to like, how you create your listing and what you are, are mark, who you're marketing to. Like your listing is your marketing piece. So um, you wanna attract families and you wanna market, use words and things that are gonna attract families. Um, things like nearby parks and blah, 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 or whatever. Um, so all of that is really good. So yeah, the only thing with three and four bedrooms is you have to implement certain things to make sure that you avoid parties. Um, because people like to party. <laughs> I want to get approved for corporate leasing. We talked about that a bit. A appropriate percentage for co-hosting, I have seen and done anywhere from 15 to 30%. Um, and it just depends on what you're offering, um, how much work you're going to be doing. And then um, 
like with the luxury ones, I did a little higher too, because I was kind of, I was just offering more work. Um, but you know, it's a negotiation between you and that owner. Okay. Okay, answer this stuff about licenses. Would it be best to have your Airbnb? So Airbnb as an LLC or just an individual, you can start either way. I, I always recommend eventually you getting an LLC so you have that. The point of an LLC is for a little bit limited liability, right? So it's to protect you, protect any assets that you have. Um, it's, just, it's just a good idea. It's not a must. You don't have to. Um, but, you know, eventually, like I started, like I said, I started in my own apartment. So I wasn't even thinking about all that. Like I just started. Um, and I think you don't want to be held back. Um, but it's a really good thing to do. It's really great to be able to sign your leases in your LLC's name. I teach you how to set up an LLC just in case you may not have know how to do that um, in the course as well. Hey, April. When do you get to, what? when do I go live on Zoom? I think that question is, um, this is the first time aside from my private, um, my private group that I'm really going live and it's because Facebook and Instagram are down, but maybe I'll do it more often. Um, okay, yes, Shannon, good job um, redirecting the conversation. Let's talk about courses and eBooks. So um, this is really the first time I'm talking about courses and eBooks in depth. Um, so yes, I started selling some form of my Airbnb course, probably mid 2019 and then 2020, I kind of picked it up a little bit mid 2020 really is when, when things started going because I started being more active on social media, um, and just doing things like this, going live, just talking to people about what it is that I do. Um, so people literally, I, I just moved to Vegas a year ago and I've started to meet people who are like, oh, you're that Airbnb girl. And I'm like, oh, you know me. <laughs> um, so, and that's all due to courses and eBooks. And so, um, I think it's a great, great way to make money. And so I'll be releasing a course on how to create your own course and how to create your own digital products like eBooks by the end of the year. So what I would love to do is get your questions on, um, on you know, what questions do you have about starting a course? What questions do you have about starting an ebook? What kind of things are you guys interested in? All right, so I'm gonna kind of, oh yes, Shannon, yes. Um, to answer your question, I am a course and ebook mentor, so I'm open to it, yes. <laughs> That's my next thing. Um, Okay, so I'm going to kind of just focus on the course questions now. Um, will the course be the same price? I'm not sure what the course price will be just yet. Um, it's definitely going to be like I'm going to do a founder's price, meaning like the people who either pre-order or like the first hundred people to sign up or something like that um, will get like a reduced price, right? You'll get the intro price. Um, I don't know how much it's gonna be right now, but I will definitely share that with you guys. And I'm gonna, I'm going to go live more often so I can get good feedback and get questions from you guys about what you're interested in. So I think that will help inform the price of the course. The way that I want the course to be set up is, I wanna teach you how to, you know, initially, so it's almost like, the way that I sell my products, if you've been around for a while, you've probably noticed, I always offer something free first. A lot of people call this like a lead magnet, right? It's a great way um, to collect people's contact information so you can stay in touch with them. For instance, this is a great, um, this proves my point so well. I was able to te um, text you guys and email you that I was gonna go live today because I have been collecting your information and not just relying on Instagram, right? Or, or Facebook. So even though I'm using Facebook and Instagram, um, I'm often saying, hey, um, check out my free 
Airbnb guide or check out my free uh, Airbnb class. So this is free content that I'm giving away to people. Um, one, because I want to give them this information, right? That's the whole point of me creating it. But two, you want to own your own database. Um, and I wish I was even better at this because God forbid, like something happens for real, for real with Facebook and Instagram. Um, I have to kind of build on another platform, but I still have my database, my text message list and my Facebook, um, my email list. And those are mine, right? It's not only housed with Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook and Instagram. I have, I own these, I have access to them. Um, they're not going anywhere, right? Unless the internet just like explodes. <laughs> um, so creating free content is a really good way to initially, one, find out if people are even interested in the topic that you have, and two, um, you know, collect people's information. And it's a great way, like even before, for instance, my course, I'm still working on it, right? It's not ready, but I have a, um, a free guide that I, I just kind of started talking about recently, um, three ways to start your own course, right? Um, and it talks about like, uh, finding your niche, right? So finding your topic, finding what it is that you're interested in, that you're good at, that you're knowledgeable about, and that you are passionate about. So for like me, if you had asked me 10 years ago, would I be doing a course on Airbnb? I would have said no. But then I, um, you know, I worked on Airbnb for, for the last six plus years. And so I'm very knowledgeable about it just by my, my experience, right? So you can think of that, or you can think of something you're really good at. There are people who have courses on baking, right? There are people who have courses on how to, I don't know, distill water and have a clean, healthy lifestyle or stuff. I mean, you can have a course on anything because people love knowledge, right? It doesn't have to be this huge business thing, um, or it can be. It's all about your experience, your knowledge. And then I want to talk about imposter syndrome because I remember there was a period where I was like, man, I've only hosted XYZ number of Airbnbs and I don't even have as many as I used to. And this, this guru has like 2000 or something crazy like that. The thing is you can teach someone if you are just a few steps ahead of them. You don't have to be perfect, right? And you can price yourself accordingly. Although a lot of times we underprice ourselves. I've had a lot of people tell me, I'm not gonna, I know you guys don't think that, but a lot of people have been like, your course is too cheap. <laughs> like it's, it feels good to me to price it that way. But, um, you know, imposter syndrome is something you need to, to get over, right? Like if you know five, if you're five steps ahead of a lot of people that you wanna teach, you are more than qualified to teach that topic or subject. It doesn't have to be five steps. I'm just using that as an example. Um, so that's something you can start thinking of. Like, what are you interested in? What are you knowledgeable about? And then what are you willing to talk about for some time? Um, because I have been talking about Airbnb for a long time. I mean, it's part of, I, I love it. I think it's a great business model. I'm excited to be talking about courses and digital products. Um, because I've been talking about Airbnb for over half a decade. So you have to pick something that either you're willing to talk about quite a lot of, um, or you're willing to, we'll get more into that. But like the beautiful thing is I can stop talking about my Airbnb course, put ads into it, like proper actual advertising, never have to talk about it again. And I would still get sales. That's the beauty of creating these digital products. Um, I know this uh, course creator, she unfortunately passed away about a year ago and um, her brother runs her page and she created a lot of digital products. I mean, a lot. And it's a legacy for her family because she's not here to talk about it today, but it's still making sales, um, you know, with ads and all that. So I just say that to say, um, you can really create something that's sustainable. It, it takes work uh, initially. You know, I always say passive income comes after active work, right? So you put in the work up front, 
you go hard up front, you, you learn to build the course itself, you learn to build the uh, marketing and all that, and then you are able to put it on autopilot. Um, so yeah, what questions do you guys have about courses? How often or long is the course? So the course is not finished yet, um, but um, it'll be kind of the same similar format where it'll be pre-recorded, and then I will probably have some, like a live coaching piece in there, maybe once a week or something like that, excuse me. And um, I don't, so the, the course in terms of length, a part of me doesn't wanna make it too long because a lot of times people get overwhelmed and don't finish courses if they're too long. But then a part of me wants to like throw the entire kitchen sink at, you guys like I want to give you all the information so here's the thing there's like building your email list right how to do that and then there is the piece on how to actually like structure your course organize it put it together and how to record it but the thing is when your course is fully recorded and done nobody knows about it so then there's a whole piece on how to market your course um organically which means you don't have to necessarily pay for it it's more about the work and then how to market your course with paid ways right that's a lot of information to put into one course so i'm thinking of the first two pieces i'll probably put together as one course and maybe that third piece on marketing might be a separate course I would love your feedback. I'm open to it. Would you rather that be in one big behemoth course? Remember, if it's a big behemoth course, it's going to have big behemoth price tag. <laughs> um, or I could separate it, right? Um, so you guys can give me your feedback. Let me know. Would I be able to do some type of payment plan for the course? Yes, I always offer a payment plan because I have been there and I'm still there sometimes. Some of these, I love courses. Like I said, I have mentors and some of these courses, you guys, I'm telling you, my courses are cheap. Like some of these courses are like 2,000, 5,000, $6,000. So I'm all for a payment plan because I'm not trying to drop all that all the time. Um, so I would probably do a payment plan of some kind, like four payments. And then I would probably do same thing with, um, PayPal Pay Later, which allows you to get full access to my programs um, without having to pay upfront. So you, you have no payments and no interest for six months um, and you get full access to the program. But you have to, if you, if you decide with any of my courses, right? So if you go to my Airbnb course right now, you can do that. You don't have to pay anything upfront. If you use PayPal Pay Later, which is PayPal Credit, Make sure you select PayPal credit and not regular PayPal because they will charge you. If you, they'll charge whatever account you have associated with your PayPal account if you choose regular PayPal. So, um, and then people email me and I'm like, I make it so clear. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can you can use PayPal credit, PayPal pay later, and you would get full access to the course um, without any payments um, upfront for six months. Oh, PayPal denial. I don't know. <laughs> I make it available. I, I don't get to make the decisions, unfortunately, on who PayPal allows and who they don't. So, um, but the payment plan option is always there um, for you. So I will do that with the new course as well. Oh, someone said, when is it gonna, when is it gonna um, be available? That's precious work I gotta do. Um, maybe around November. Oh, that's next month. November, December. My birthday is in November. It's a milestone birthday. So um, we'll see. I mean, that would be really great. I think it would be good for people to start working on stuff like that before the beginning of the new year. So you, you've inspired me with that question. I'll get to work. Um, maybe separate classes since not everyone needs, yeah, or wants the same information, exactly. That's a good idea. Um, and that's a good point, Merlin. So that's kind of why I separated the Airbnb course and the travel nurse hosting course, because not everyone needs or wants both. I have a lot of travel nurse, people who take the travel nurse course who already have Airbnb. So they're like, girl, I know how to do that already. I just want the travel nurse piece. And then I have some people who are like, I want both. I want to start an Airbnb, but I know I want 
travel nurses. So I, I make it so that you can add, I think, to your purchase, either one when you're buying one or the other, if that makes sense. So. Oh, November 17th, I'm November 20th. Yes to the Scorpios. Woo -woo. All right. Um, okay, guys, I don't see that many more questions. Um, I, I don't mind doing, if one person wants to come off, uh, I'm a little nervous. I never know what people are going to say when they come off mute. Um, but if someone has a really good question, you know whether or not your question is good um, and you want to come off mute, feel free. <laughs> um, uh, if not, um, um, I'm going to be done. Does my travel nurse course cover everything for Airbnb? So no, that's why they're separate. Um, my travel nurse course, actually, let me let me share all these links again, just so you guys don't have to scroll. Um, I'll share the travel nurse course first. The travel nurse course really just focuses on how to find, um, book, and successfully host travel nurses. So I'm walking you through like how to market to them, how to find them, how to cater to them, like how to set up, you know, your listing description in a way that is going to attract them. Oh, I didn't mean to send, I meant to send that link to everyone. Hold on. Um, I give you like the list of websites where you can find them. And then I, on the back end, I show you how to successfully host them, like how to screen them, how to make sure you're protecting yourself um, legally and all that good stuff. So the Airbnb course is focused on really setting up your Airbnb business from A to Z. So some people get both, some people just need one. Um, you can always add on um, whenever you're purchasing. Okay, so that was the travel nurse. Oh no, I just shared the B&B from scratch. I just shared the Airbnb course link. And then this is, I should probably label this better. See, this is why I need an assistant, guys. Of course. It's so hard for me to type right now. Why am I, I'm tripping, hold on. It's really hard for me to type right now because my nails are ridiculously long right now. I'm really overdue for getting my nails done. And I just keep putting it off every day. But I don't know if any of you have ever seen the meme of Peter Griffin when he's like typing like this. That's how I'm typing right now. <laughs> it's not good. With the long nails. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's really not good. Um, but I don't know. If it hits like four o'clock and I haven't left the house, I'm like, I'm good. Um, I'm kind of a homebody. All right, ebook bundle. Okay, so the travel nurse course ebook bundle, and I will share again. See you guys. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen with Airbnb. I'm with Facebook um, and Instagram because that's where I usually. It's back on. Oh, it is. I thought yeah, they I said they said he lost seven billion dollars. <laughs> I, oh, I did see that. I kind of went on right before I got on here, and I thought I saw it was kind of working, but I was like, I don't trust it. Um, so, um, oh, but you know what? If I can get tech savvy enough, maybe I can post this as an IGTV if I could figure it out. So, hey guys, if you know someone who um, is interested in being a virtual assistant um, and has reasonable prices, because I'm still a startup entrepreneur, <laughs> um, you know, just maybe like five hours a week, I wouldn't mind help with stuff like this. Like you guys can see, I'm struggle busting here with, um, with uh, technology sometimes. So, but yes. Oh, the last thing I'll say is the way that I'm designing the course is um, to show you kind of like in my Airbnb course to show you like how to set up the technology for a lot of this stuff, even though I just said I'm not very tech savvy. One thing I did do is learn how to build, you know, the sales pages, the lead magnet, like how to collect people's information, their emails and their 
phone numbers and how to set up your email lists and how to set up your um, text marketing and things like that. Um, but even your sales pages, like all that is going to help you actually sell your course a lot better. But aside from the selling part, because that is kind of more on the back end, how to like what platforms to actually choose to set up your actual course itself? Like where do you want to host your content? You know, that is a big thing because that is, you know, when people sign up for your course, that's what they're going to see. They're going to just even based on how your course looks is going to give them a perception of the value of what they just paid for. <laughs> um, and that sales page before they get to the course is going to give them a perception of the value of what they're about to pay for. So I'm breaking all that down for you as well. I'm so glad you guys are interested in this. And oh, no, you guys are interested in VA stuff. Oh, where do you send your resume? You know what? Why don't I tell you? You can send it to support at Nana Alice Nayarko. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it because I know my name is long. Com. Support at Nana Alice Nayarko.com. I got to make sure I spell my own name right. I did. Okay. So yeah, that's where you can message me. Um, and yeah, thank you guys. Thank you all so much for your awesome questions. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions, um, now that Instagram and stuff is back up, you can DM me. You can also email questions to that same email address, support at nanaalicenayarko.com. And if you're in my course already, we do have our private Q&A tomorrow. If you're joining the course today, you can get on the private q and It's going to be at 10 a.m. Pacific, which is 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, you know, I have to do my little count. And yeah, that will be like, you can ask me super specific questions um, about your situation. And um, sometimes if people have listings already, like the person who asked me, you know, what to do about how can I get better, more, more bookings for my listing? Like if you're in, in the group, you can send me your listing and we can go through it together during that live Q&A. Like I could be like, oh, you need to switch this around, this around X, Y, Z. Oh, put your Instagram. See, this is the stuff a good, a good assistant would do. Put your Instagram in here. You smart. You right, Takis. Um, it's Nana Alice Nayarko. But let me get the link. Let me find the link. Y'all, I was so bothered by this Instagram thing today. I posted, I'm like barely on TikTok. I think I have like nine followers. And I posted like one of my videos on TikTok because I was like, oh my God, is this going away? Do I need to be a TikToker now? Um, so I'm glad to hear that it's, it's back up and running. Um, but that is my Instagram as well. So thank you guys so much. Um, that's all I got for you. And I hope to see you guys again. I'll probably be live on Instagram. I think I have a, a live scheduled with another, um, another content creator, I think on Wednesday, possibly. But I will post about that and I'll, I'll, um, I'll send a, a, a notification by text as well. So okie dokie, guys. That's it. Thank you all so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.